cool. Cool. Okay, is that everything? Oh, uh, that's everything with the thermal expansion. Basically, all it's going to be doing now is depositing our ores nicely into the chest over here. We don't have to do anything else but watch for any dust. Because another thing is, let's say you finish pulverizing iron and you want to move on to tin or copper or gold or whatever. If there's nickel dust in this bottom output and you stick your tin in, it's not going to start pulverizing it because it sees, it recognizes that the output for the bottom is not the same output that it would potentially get with tin. So it's not going to pulverize. So you got to make sure that you remove all the outputs from it. And the reason why we don't have the bottom one, you might be wondering, oh, why aren't you cooking the nickel dust since you're getting the bonus anyways? Nickel dust is something that you want to use for something else. You don't nickel ingots themselves don't really have that much of a purpose yet in the game. That I I would go so much to say that they're, they're kind of useless. And also another thing is it's not just with nickel dust, but with gold dust and silver dust and other dust. You're not going to smelt all of it into the ingots. Although, if you do make the mistake of doing that, don't worry. You could stick it back into a pulverizer or another machine like this that gives you dust, you know, like an ingot, and it will give you the dust back. It's a one to one, so you won't be missing out on anything except you'll be spending a bit more energy because you made that mistake in the first place. Cool. Um, did we do a whole bunch more quarries downstairs? Is there stuff we could see? Uh, not so much boring. I mean, the nether portal's there, obviously, as you guys must know, because we were talking about nether fortresses before. And I did do some tunnels at the very bottom in search of diamonds. I think I was lucky once, and not much has changed over here. So, I mean, the big thing is the aesthetic that's happened up here, and that was just so then we had enough elbow room for what's to come. And also a great thing here, I don't think we mentioned it last time, or if we did, still worth mentioning these barrels. Wonderful things, they only cost logs to make. And the great thing about them are wood, wood to make. The great thing about them is that they can store 64 stacks or yeah. Yeah. Four stacks of one item. As long as, like, let's say you want to store 64 stacks of stone wood because you can stain a lot of stone wood. You can't do it if they're of different damages. Like, it won't allow you to store it. Oh, okay. So it kind of counts it as a different ID? Yeah. Well, here, try it yourself. Like, take a damage pick and try right clicking on this empty barrel here. It'll tell you. It'll give you a little message saying, "Oh, yeah." Because you know, if you have to assume that everything's the same, so if it's damaged, it can't pick between which one's more damaged than the other. So it's kind of a safe guard to prevent. They should just put it so that you can put it in, and then it'll just give you the like the one with the most, with the least damage. I guess but that would take a lot. Of I think that would, to me, that seems more high tech than just like a barrel. Is this this guy is made the same way as the other things. So I've I've been saying furnace style a lot because a lot of these kind of branch off from the vanilla recipes early on. And what a barrel is is furnace style logs with uh, on the top barrel. Yeah, the top center cable show you. Some wooden Slab. slabs, and that makes you a barrel. So, kind of resource heavy if you are lacking for wood, but well worth it because it's for the heck of a lot of stuff, and it means you won't be filling up your chest that you want to fill up with important things with stuff like cobble, dirt, gravel, netherrack. And really, all the useless things that you still can need for other stuff, especially in Feed the Beast for recycling later on. 
that you don't want to have fill up in a stupid chest. And also, it's much easier to access. You can automatically see how much you have for something, and if you right click on it, it tells you in numbers how much it is, not just this 24, 64, plus 15, which might seem like that to the, some of you new to the series. Okay. And I see this one last thing over here. It says, don't look. What is this? All right, so this. It's not that it's necessarily not ready, but it's something that it's a part of Soul Board, Soul Shard. Mod. Oh, okay, the Soul Shards. Yeah, and and what it is is a Soul Forge, and if you look it up in any app. Oh no, E. <laughs> oh no, I have my mic right in front of my face. Okay. You don't have to jam backspace like that. If you had something in already, you could just hit right click over the black, like type something up. Okay. Hit right click and it clears it. Oh. Yeah. It's a, a quick little thing that makes it easier. So. Yeah, so so forge. Jesus Christ. Yes. Yeah, so well, it's in stone, you no, know, but if you click on that tile dust. You'll see it's close and it is. Vile dust. Yeah, but what was the other thing called? Corrupt essence, yeah. So, vile dust. It seems weird, but it's really easy to get from cooking soul sand. So, it's not really that hard in a recipe if you had the first visit to the nether. And with the soul forge, you can stick. Yeah, it can only be fueled by. This corrupted so, so you have to make more of that. that. You want to fuel this, and the reason why you want to use this soul forge outside of like a regular furnace, you might be wondering, is you use it to cook diamonds. Diamonds. And, yes. yes. And when you cook these diamonds, I think it takes like eight cooks per diamond. You get yourself three what are called soul shards, and the cool thing about soul shards is. If you have them in your hotbar, and let's say you're out there in the world and you see a, a zombie, and you kill that zombie, if a soul shard is in your hotbar, when you kill that zombie, it will identify now with that, the kind of soul of that zombie as the stable soul shard. And it will start numbering each, you know, counting each kill. kill. Okay. And what are these tiers? I can see it in the NEI. So with every certain number of zombies that you kill, there's different tiers to the shard. And basically the, the ultimate goal to these things is you can turn them into your very own personalized spawners. So you don't have to always rely on finding dungeons in the world. Although, as you'll see when we get to the soul shard thing, still finding these things makes it easier on you. So once you get to... Let's say 64 kills, you get to tier 1, and that would be a regular overworld spawner of some sort. It's reactive to light, it spawns relatively slowly, won't do much. But as you get higher in tiers, this kind of reactivity to light lessens to the point... Oh, spider. Got it lessens to the point where eventually at tier 5, which is a ridiculous 1,024 kills, and imagine doing that with you know, creepers or something. You know, for those of you out there who are crazy enough to want a creeper spawner, then you get to the point where these spawners that you make spawn whatever thing, zombie, skeleton, whatever soul shard that you have for whatever thing, ridiculously fast. They will no longer be reactive to light, which means you could have a ton of torches around it, around your spawner, if it's tier 5 or tier 4. And it will not be shut off, it won't stop, it won't slow down at all, so be careful of that. Although, don't worry, it can be shut off with a redstone signal, so if you have a little lever or... Red power. Red power. Yeah. yeah. Stuff like that. Cool. So, it, it makes it a lot easier to do mob grinding. Yeah, I saw it on a couple other videos, and it's like, really, like, the fifth... Fifth tier is like crazy fast. Yeah, you'll see. I mean, we won't ruin it completely for you right now, but you'll see how fast a tier five goes. 
It's crazy. And the suggestions I will make for those of you who are just going to go ahead and start soul sharding right away is if you want to get the most out of your soul shards, I would highly suggest doing a skeleton one first. Because first, they, they have spawners in the overworld, which if you find a spawner and you have that soul shard on you, you can right click the spawner and it'll give you a couple hundred souls, so it kind of speeds along the process, which is good, which is why I said it's still good to find those spawners in the world. And second, it's, it's kind of the, the one that gives you the most benefits and is the easiest to get, because skeletons aren't hard to come by in the overworld. They're not necessarily hard to kill most of the time. And they give you things that you're actually going to use, like bone meal, bows, and arrows, while also not being dangerous like creepers. And of course, creepers are harder to kill and sometimes harder to find, although you will be surprised that there are other spawners in Feed the Beast that you won't find in Vanilla Minecraft. So if you happen upon a certain spawner that creates things that explode, in a mine shaft, don't <laughs> me. I, I didn't not tell you. Good English is good. Oh, yeah. Okay, so. This episode's getting a little finishy. Um, so, what. We'll, I guess. We're gonna continue working on our stuff. It's getting to be nighttime, actually, so. We should probably sleep. Um, we're gonna let this run. Hopefully, Ian's got it working to where it won't explode. Because I've seen these explode before in other places. Yeah, no, you still got these thin lines. I, it's okay. And... I heard that door. Uh, <laughs> so we're pulverizing this. What does tin ore give you when you... Tin? Oh. It gives you the, the tin dust, and it has a small chance of giving you iron dust. Which is good. Cool. I think the best one is uh, copper because it gives you the gold dust. And there's a cool trick that you can do with gold and silver dust later that will show you that will save you a lot of resources and time for a lot of different recipes. And True it's that. True that. Yeah. Why is it gold dust and not pulverized gold? What's the difference? Well, what ha what happened with a lot of these mods in Feed the Beast, as I'm sure veterans of the game of the mod pack will know, is that a lot of these different mods overlap with the things that they do. So, like, thermal expansion, the reason why we're using this now is because it's way cheaper to make in this part, in this stage of the game, than industrial craft, especially with Greg Tech on hard. Greg Tech. Yeah, Greg Tech. We, we talked about it. <laughs> Still terrible. Damn it, Greg. So, it, what happened is, in the past, tin ore in a pulverizer would give you pulverized tin. Just like iron ore in a pulverizer would give you pulverized iron. And you'll actually see it if you search pulverized in NEI, that pulverized iron, copper, tin, it's still all there. But now with this version, this updated version of Feed the Beast, they made it, then it's all just dust now. So you'll you'll get iron dust, tin dust, copper dust from the pulverizer, even though before it was called something else. Just like, you'll still encounter in the world, if you go to a mine shaft, ingots of copper or tin that are just called copper or tin. They, it won't have ingot in the name. And some recipes even require those specific ones like you'll need copper and not copper ingots to make certain things so there's still stuff like that in the game where it's really annoying stuff for ingots and various yeah i see it you know this this pulverized versus dust situation shows me that the mod authors and the feed the beast team are slowly trying to to fix it so you know good on their part Okay, cool. This is awesome. Ian's been been the one doing basically all of the all the work while I was doing other stuff. He's been the one AFKing. Are oh, you? Ow. Oh, oh, that was a love uh, app. That, that. <laughs> and so, big thanks to him for for setting all this up. He basically did all of this, and I just 
press a button and and sit here and he does all of it for me so thanks to him um he doesn't have a youtube channel and he doesn't record but if you want to see more of him you know like this video and if we get a lot you know we're going to continue making this series whether or not you watch it but it definitely helps with our uh, morale and stuff when we're yeah, when we go to sit down just a low self-esteem yeah and, and it's like if you guys don't do this then i don't know what i'll do <laughs> it's basically like you know is it worth our time to sit down and do this versus doing like actual work and like things that you have to do for you know like homework and whatnot so and also guys on a serious note with what gabe was saying if you don't like what you're seeing in this series just let gabe know in the comments i mean if you if you have a suggestion or a question about something that wasn't covered or something you want to see us do a mod that we haven't necessarily talked about whatever you know we screwed up you hate us death threats we'll take you know fine we just want to know you care. Just, you know. Or you don't care. Anything. Please. You know, I love we, you. Yeah. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time.